Hello, church family. Pray all is well with you today. Today we're working out of Psalm 81, and this is a psalm that he wrote. And it starts out talking about calling for the congregation in verse 1. And verse 2 is about the Levites and uh, the musicians and the uh, singers. And then verse 3 talks about the priest blowing the trumpet. And this actually uh, talks about blowing the trumpet at the time of the new moon. The new moon just occurred um, on the sixth at sunset, which happens to be the first day of the year uh, for Israel, which always occurs. The first day of the month always occurs on a new moon. And then it mentions at the full moon on our solemn feast of day. The full moon starts the... Uh, festival of tabernacles. So we see these two events taking place. And that happens to be today, the 20th of September, matches up with the 15th day of their first month of Teshri. And at sunset will be that new moon. So, and this was given over 3,500 years ago. If we look in Leviticus 23, we would see the uh, layout of what was required uh, for these festivals. And then down in verse 6, it talks about, God tells about what he has done. I have removed the burden. I have freed you from the baskets of, of labor, and I've delivered you. I've answered you. I've tested you. Wow. God has provided all of that. And you know, the story of Israel is our own history in another shape and time. God has heard us. He's delivered us. He's liberated us. And too often our unbelief make the wretched return of mistrust, murmuring, and rebellion. Are you frustrated? Do you rebel against things that are happening? Well, maybe we need to look to see where our trust is. Trust in the Lord. We should have peace in our heart. And in verse 8, he said, Here, O oh my people, I will admonish you. O oh Israel, if you would listen to me, and he's, he's talking about my people. He's not talking about the pagans of the world. He's talking about my people. And, and, you know, quite frankly, the problem is not that the world does not know God. How can we expect it to? The problem is that the people of God do not know God. Or at least they do not act like they do. Instead of worshiping the Lord and Him only, Christians seem to be worshiping the gods of the secular culture, the God of wealth, the God of comfort, the God of pleasure, the God of fame, the God of status, the God of self. I'll do it my way. My own stubborn heart. And then he goes in and says, he tells, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. And it reminds me of a mother bird feeding her chicks, how they eagerly open their mouth with their appetite and so on. There's no problem there in feeding them. And then verse 11, but my people again would not heed my voice and Israel would have none of me. Wow. And I gave them over to their own stubborn hearts to walk in their own ways. And sometimes that's what God does. Just as a, he just turns us over to our own hearts and let us go our stubborn ways. And we go through life just like a ship without a rudder, just wailing back and forth and torn by the sea and the troubles that come our way. And we just wash back and forth and back and forth and unstable in all our ways. And he ends this here with a very uh, sad note. He says here, I would have satisfied you. Filled with a tragedy of missed opportunity and unfulfilled potential, God would have richly provided for them as he will provide for us. I would have satisfied you. May you read God's word and study it today and uh, meditate it in your heart and see what God has for you. He does not want frustration. He does not want indecision. He does not want your lack of concern. He wants your heart. We can trust him. May God bless you.